Hello. So, I found something kind of interesting downstairs, and I wanted to share it with you. <clears throat> it is an old Windows ME box. Celeron inside. Mi designed for Microsoft Windows ME. I don't even know if that's visible. Focus. I think it's in focus. Another neat thing is the uh, the burner that's in it. <clears throat> yeah, there's a burner. It has USB, which is promising, because uh, my other DOS box that I have can't run USB. A Celeron might be too fast to run as a DOS box, but I definitely can run DOS on it, and it does have a floppy drive. It also has a CD writer, which is amazing. It might be a great little Windows 98 box. Designed for Millennium Edition. I could even run Windows ME on this, but it had uh, more flaws than 98, I think. It, it, did, it fixed one of the flaws, I think, of... Uh, Windows 98, which was the memory leak in Explorer.exe. I think that was gone by the time uh, Windows ME came out. <clears throat> but they introduced a new flaw by adding universal plug and play. Uh, the UPnP daemon, because it was so new, it was just coded by a new team. Or I think it was a new team. That is an assumption. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, and they just, they didn't pay enough attention to uh, buffer overflow exploits, so you could buffer overflow remotely any computer with Windows Millennium. The same thing happened when uh, Windows XP came out, and they really didn't fix anything until Windows 7-ish, I think. Up until then, they just had so many buffer overflow exploits and everything that Windows was Swiss cheese. But it was the most popular OS, so, you know, there you have it. It looks like whoever threw this out took their hard drive, which is, you know, fine. Nice to have old drives, but in something like this, I might put, like, an SD card or something. Yeah. It has a floppy disk, the CD writer, a really tiny power supply. Best tech. Power electronics core model ATX100-5. 100 watts max. That's like IBM XT level. Just zoom in on that. Yeah. This thing is hot garbage. It's so small. I wonder if it even works anymore. So yeah. A Celeron of some kind lives underneath here. This is all really tightly integrated. How do I get everything out? Oh. Looks like this board just slides outwards. Okay. Oh, and there's a mystery screw inside the case. So somebody's taken this apart before to rescue the hard drive, I guess. <clears throat> but this part just kind of comes away. Revealing the guts inside. <laughs> oh, I'm tugging on wires here. That's no good. It is very dirty in there. So yeah. So if you pull the motherboard section out, it does come off. You can disconnect the power. I guess this looks like a fan or something. It is a fan header. Here's a floppy and hard drive headers for those things. Some case front headers. Thankfully they look easy enough to put back in again. And yeah, there we go. I just bought a new air duster, but I also just cleaned the carpet, so I don't want to spray dust all over the place. <clears throat> what a dilemma. Okay, so it has some RAM in here. It has two different sticks of RAM. One is uh, Hyundai Korea PC100U 322-620. 128 megs. That's not bad for an old computer. I have more dims actually. I have some dims kicking around that I found in the garbage before. As in RAM, 128 megs. So these, this has 256 megs of RAM. That's pretty good for an old Celeron. 
I guess like, you know, since there's no hard drive, we won't find any vintage games on here, but I can definitely find a few things in my collection to try out on this. That's neat. More stuff to play with. And we have the Ziff socket here. I'm just gonna undo the fan for now. And the CPU is pretty solidly attached to the heat sink. Oh no, it's not. The heat sink is properly bolted down. Uh, it's one of these guys. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Push down and push out. That should come off. Oh wow, it has the a foil, like an aluminum foil heat sink interface. This is a Celeron. Ooh, I might have a better processor to put in this. 800, 128, 1.7 volts. Yeah, I might have another CPU that I can put into this. I found a Pentium 3 downstairs that was quite dirty and it was a beige box. And I, I sadly didn't rescue it. But I did rescue the CPU out of it, the RAM, and like a video card. Like an ATI video card. Oh, there's screws randomly falling out of this. Somebody used the wrong screws. Yeah, the somebody didn't even screw in the uh, this USB port thing. I have one of these kicking around. Unless this is USB two. Zoomax USB two. Ooh, gives you four more USB ports on the back of the machine. All right and a modem, which is like 100% useless these days. And an Ethernet card is a D-Link. It's also not screwed in. <clears throat> Come on. Not screwed in, but it's not coming out. A DFE 530TX. This is such a common card. This is bound to be supported by everything. Uh, this is pretty good. Also, pardon my voice, I went out to a bar last night, and in Toronto it's almost impossible to hear any person in a bar. So you have to like practically scream to talk to each other. It's terrible. So yeah, my voice is all messed up today. It was a going away party for a friend at a company. Alright. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, I might post a video or something later if I do some cleanup. But yeah, it's kind of neat. 800 megahertz Celeron, 256 megs of RAM, has an Ethernet card, CD burner and a floppy. That's a really nice old DOS system. Well, have a good day. Bye for now. So I looked in a drawer and I did have a better processor. I found an uh, Intel Pentium 3, 1256K cache, 133 MHz front side bus, and it's also 1.75 volts, so it should run in this machine. I might need to change some settings, but it should be able to run. I also found, so here's the old RAM, it's like two 128s, right? I also found, I have three 256 megabyte modules and two of them are Kingston. So I think I'm going to use these two Kingston modules and see if they work. Again, I haven't even turned this machine on yet, but I feel like if I have these upgrades on hand, I'm going to want to see how they perform. So let's do it. Let's put these upgrades in. Take out the CPU again. See how I lifted the latch this way as I pushed down on this metal piece? That's how you get those off without a lot of trouble. Sorry for bumping the camera. I like that nice big Intel on this Celeron though. I'll just set that down right here and pin one so on these things there's two missing pins and in the socket there's two missing pins and then there's two corners without missing pins so that's how you line that up there might be a bent pin in the corner here 
Did I bend one? No. Nope. Just didn't set it down right. Oh, is this not compatible? Or did I just bend some pins? It's kind of hard to tell. <clears throat> it should be pin it fully compatible. But there's one thing on this side that's preventing me. Yeah, I think it's a bent pin. I don't want to force it. Oh, no, it fits. It fits just fine. Yeah, I was vigorously rubbing the top of the chip to get a bunch of gunk off, so I may have bent the pins slightly, but they do fit fine in the socket. I was just being gentle so I don't break things. Now, the fan's dirty, so I'm going to spray it out. Pardon the noise. There we go. My poor cats went running. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, kitties. It's just cleaning. They hate the dread vacuum as well. I was vacuuming earlier, as I was saying. All right, and CPU fan. So these use standard fan headers. I guess this is at the point in computing history where a lot of stuff was already very standardized. And these little um, pre-built boxes, like an HP pre-built machine obviously would have a lot of very standard parts usually because the times of like making your own custom stuff that like it, it sort of is past um, uh, computer manufacturers discovered that it wasn't very profitable to make people have to buy all kinds of new stuff when they don't need to so yeah because people just won't do it they'll buy other products that uh, are upgradable but yeah, um, here's the old Celeron, some old RAM, and now I've got 512 megs of RAM in this thing. That's amazing. That's definitely a pretty good early Windows machine. Next step, I guess, is to hook this up and boot it up and see if it turns on. So now we have this mess of cables, and uh, I'm going to put everything back together. Oh, there's still dust in there. Oh, that's where the intake fan is, on this side. It doesn't look like it spins when I spray it with cold air. Let's use the, this guy. I hope it's not seized. Oh, it does seem to spin. It just doesn't, it's not loose enough. There we go. Is this duster already empty? Dollar store dust. Of course, runs it right away. Okay. So, I guess the next step would be take these connectors, hook them back up. So, one, two, three, four, one, two. Yeah, that makes sense. And we have the blue one that was there, or what? It wasn't blue. No, it was this guy. And they pretty much only hook up one way. This has like two pins on this side, three pins on this side, and the connector only has two pins, a blanked out spot, and then three pins. So that's pretty easy to hook back up. By this stage, again, in computer history, most things were so standard that like they wanted anybody to be able to assemble it so that they could save money in the factories and stuff like that. I'm going to take that IDE cable out because I'm going to put a flash storage device right in there. I'll be right back. So in the background you can see a friend has joined us. That's my old DOS box. I, it is a Hewlett Packard Multimedia M404. It works, but not great. And it only takes um, PS2 keyboards. I have a DOS driver that makes USB keyboards work but it also makes every game crash. Any program that takes over the keyboard instantly crashes when uh, the DOS driver is loaded, so can't keep using that, unfortunately. So on the motherboard here, the connectors are, are uh, labeled primary and secondary. So we want the primary one. 
to have this little two gigabyte Lexar flash storage thing. Let's plug that in there. And it's going to need floppy power as well. So do we have another floppy cable in here? That's another problem. We might not have a free floppy cable power. No, we don't. Okay. So i got to go find one of those. Got to go find an adapter for Molex. So, let me go to manual focus and focus on my hand. This is, um, it has a floppy end on it. And then it has a Molex end on it. And it has a capacitor there because the, I thought the power supply was dying. So I wanted to put some, a smoothing capacitor across the 5 volts, but uh, that's probably not necessary. power. It needs power. It actually fails to boot without that. I'll put the secondary IDE in, which powers the CD-ROM drive and the CD burner. Exciting. We also have, there's a header in here. There's a fan header and there's also a really tiny header here. And the tiny header, I don't know what it's for. I think it might be for CD-ROM audio. I can't find the spot on the board for it. but it might have got pulled out before I even noticed. Yeah, I can't find a spot for it. That's weird. Where's it coming from? It is coming from the CD-ROM. So, yeah. And for some reason, it's wrapped through the power supply. Well, there's a little header. I found the CD-ROM header. It's right there. And because this cable was wrapped through the power supply for whatever reason, probably just for cable management, um, it yanked out. But now it's back. Uh, I gotta hook up floppy. So don't copy that floppy. <laughs> copy it all you want. Uh, and then power with the clip on this side. And that's it. And this little cheap and cheerful motherboard can go back in the case, although before that, see what's this mechanical screw? It's just some random screw somebody tried to use. I will screw down the USB and Ethernet card because they're just flopping around loose. Although this case is kind of a tight fit. Oh, this screw isn't like, it's not a, it's not even in straight. It's in at an angle. And they just cross-threaded it. Oh, good job. Oh, now it's still cross-threading. Oh. That's what happened back in the day when noobs worked on this stuff. Oh, the screw's not quite going in. I wonder if I should just force it. <laughs> Jeez. Zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, like, you have to really push it this way to get the cards to line up. Even then they kind of don't line up, so... And try... I don't even need this card, so I don't need to fiddle with it. If it's not going to work, this is a modem. A Lucent 1648T00 Rec 12 volts 1996 Lucent. Yeah, so just probably a 56K modem. It might even be a software modem where 
half of the functionality of uh, modulating and demodulating a signal was done in software because computers were powerful enough to just do that and not need supporting hardware for it. Instead of basically having a totally separate computer inside the modem box, which is not quite how old modems did it, but like they were more capable on their own. Old modems basically only just needed a serial connection. If you send it characters, it will work. Okay, force that screw down in straight. <laughs> oh man. And if I could push this Ethernet card over so that it aligns up with the hole. Just put the screw in a little bit of the way and then push it in place. Hold it there. So I can understand why it, a hobbyist might have really screwed up this computer because it's a tight, tight fit and things don't seem to fit properly. I wonder if I can fix this cross-threaded hole. Get it up straight. And start putting it in at the right angle. Yay, a non-cross-threaded hole. So, I mean, I guess I could put the modem back in. It's just more stuff to conflict with, but this era of computers as well, they had started to figure out, like, a lot of this stuff is plug and play. It negotiates the uh, interrupt requests and DMA automatically, instead of having to have uh, intervention by, you know, the user. So I really have to pinch this case. This case is kind of garbage. That's yeah, it's understandable why a hobbyist would have screwed this up so badly. Anyway, there. Um, we have this little blue header that's tucked in back here. Oh, this guy right here. So. And the blue fan header also has to go in. And it's way inside here, so I think I'm going to have to put this in first before I can do that. So let's get this in here. Huh. Yep, it's all lined up where it needs to be. I guess I don't need to worry about damaging a hard drive. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, maybe it'll go in like that. I don't know. Is it supposed to slide in? No. Maybe. Whoever Oh, whoever was working with this before was too rough with it, so I don't want to repeat that mistake, but... Get out of there. Get the blue cable out of the way. So what's knocking is the screws are knocking into this little hook that holds on to the, the board. So I think it has to slide in. These screws keep jamming up against here, but I don't want to take them out because they were so hard to get in the, in, in the first place. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So it, it opens like a hinge. That's why. Okay. Case is mostly together. What a struggle this machine is to work with. It is very tiny though. It's, it's a very cute little machine. So yeah, these motherboard screws were missing, or motherboard, the motherboard tray screws were missing before, but I'm going to put them in. And I have lots of these larger thread, I don't remember what the number is, but the larger thread computer screw. I have a collection and I have like little trays of 
old motherboard screws that I can use for this purpose. So, so that's cool. Yay, it's together. Um, another screw goes here, and I'll have to find one. bought these from the dollar store and I have like, you know, small compy screw, big compy screw. I have a bunch of these like those cool ones, the nice ones. Thumb screws, that's what I'm reaching for. I know words. That's right, you can put screws in without a screwdriver, most of the way. one of the same type. Don't want to mix and match it. Okay, looks like that's all together. Now I've got to find that fan header, also hook up power to things. So here's the fan cable. Where did that fan header go? It's under here somewhere. Oh, there's the power I need. So I can hook up the uh, the flash's power to one of these spare Molex connectors. I remembered where that that fan header was. Okay. So we've got power to the one thing, but I want to hook up to the front fan. Or whatever this blue thing is. I guess it's like a power supply thing. I don't want to leave it out. It is such a tight fit in this. No wonder somebody would get frustrated with this thing. Huh. It has some kind of weird power header too. It's not a floppy one, but it's a similar size. Blind? Where is this? Now I'm regretting putting those screws in because it's going to take so much effort <laughs> to get around everything. I have regrets. Are you still recording? Yeah, you are. I have regrets. I wish I had put the fan header in already. Damn it. What a tight space. And it's like behind these drives. I wish I could remove the drives. Does this 
cage detached? No, it's riveted. Oh no, I pushed in a tab I didn't want to. Oh, it makes a second three and a half inch bay go in. I've now punched the three and a half inch bay in. Oops. Do it, aren't I? It was such a pain in the ass to get this in in the first place. screws so I don't send a box of screws flying across the room. Whee! Yeah, it's supposed to unfold like that. So where's this stupid header? Come on. So where's the blue cable? Has to go in there somewhere. Here's the cable. Come on, get out. So here's the cable. Yeah, there it is, right near the power. It's for the power supply to control its fan speed. That is a pain. Gotta watch these cables, don't get them folded up in the metal. Yeah, just now that I know how it goes together, it just kind of opens like a hinge. That's handy, I guess, for such a tight space computer. I'm going to start the screw off, but not put it all the way in so that I can align all the screws first. I'm not naturally left-handed, so this is a little awkward. Yay! So we've got IDE, floppy, it's all connected. We've got power to the little flash device. I think we're ready to plug this thing in and test it. I'm tempted to put the case on just to make it look legit. Back when both sides of the case were attached to the top and it was just one big loop of metal. Oh, got two different colors of thumb screws. Hope that won't bother anybody. But I don't have two black ones. I guess I don't even need more than one, but... The 
three thumb screws in the back of a really a janky little Pentium 1000. Well, now I gotta go hook this all up and see if it runs. Hmm, so I've never seen this happen before. I put a PCI uh, ATI video card in, like a 64 meg something or other, I forget right now, and there's a resource conflict. Weird. It did say mouse, mouse initialized. That's a brand new USB mouse, so that's cool. Um, uh, the 51200 megs of RAM count, counted up fine, and it finds the hard disk. So let's try and resume and see if that works. Windows 98. There we go, nice and crisp. I'm sorry, my camera's only 720p. I don't have a better camera. I have phones that are better, but yeah. Not a camera that's better. Gee, Windows takes a long time to boot, even for a flash storage device. I took that capacitor out, by the way, because uh, that seemed a little flaky, so. Um, uh, yeah, works better now. that in with my old capacitors. It's probably a perfectly fine capacitor, so. Jeez, how long are you gonna take to boot, man? I pressed escape, so. It's kind of doing nothing. Oh, the numlock turns on. I think that conflict is causing issues. So what I might have to do is open it up and take that video card out, because that might be a bridge too far for this thing. Let me get my bicycle helmet out of the way and turn this thing on again. I've taken the offending video card out. I guess I can work on it later if there's a way to get rid of that resource conflict. This is the card I was trying to use. Just an ATI R9250 128 meg 64 bit DDR. Yeah, this might be too new of a card to go in there. I have an AGP card that's a little bit more of its era, but uh, yeah. The AGP slot is missing. It has the ability for AGP slot, but it's missing parts inside. That's the thing that happened with a lot of these pre-built computers, is they would save money by leaving out parts that you might not need. If it wasn't available from the factory, they would leave that part out. Windows 98 often hangs on this screen for quite a while. It doesn't mean it's crashed. It just means it's doing its thing. Whatever its thing it happens to be, I don't know. If I press escape, we're treated to the DOS memory stuff. <clears throat> no device driver. So it doesn't see the CD-ROM drive. There's nothing in the drive. It does open, surprisingly, so that's cool, because a lot of those t times those drives can get stuck. Man, this takes forever. I have a feeling it might not finish booting. I think this copy of Windows 95 is a little bit messed up. Windows uh, 98, actually, sorry. I have a 
stack of diskettes here. Oh yeah, there you are. So, I have a bunch of diskettes. One of them's got to be a boot disk, I know that. Win 98 start. There we go. Handily has a CD key written on it. <laughs> Shh. So I'll take out my advanced assembly language disk. Stick it in Windows 98 boot disk. And let's start this thing again. Oh, I might have to tell it to boot from the disk. It did check the disk. But it didn't boot from it, that's weird. Although, I mean the drive's flashing this time. Is it going to try and load? Flash drive light is flashing like every once in a while. I also might have to open it up and uh, on the motherboard check the dip switches for the CPU because it's currently running at 750 megahertz and this is a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3 CPU. So, And there's no setting for it in the BIOS so it must be a dip switch. You're a dip switch. Okay, that didn't work. Escape, what is it up to? Yeah, same thing. I wonder if I press F2 if I'll get that boot menu again. Interesting. Yeah, there's more hard drive light act activity this time. But I don't know what it's up to. It's not like Linux where it tells you. These user-friendly OSs and not telling you what the hell they're doing. Well, I mean, I think we can conclude the, ma the machine itself works. Um, whether I can get an OS working, I don't know. 